Hi, my name is Sushma Nagarkar. I am uh, actually a PhD in special education and I've started Yash Charitable Trust and Cafe Alpha. And you are actually watching me on February. So Cafe Arpan um, has been in existence for over a year now. We started on August 2nd, 2018. Uh, it is, and I can't say the culmination, but it's part of our journey as Yash Charitable Trust. Yash Charitable Trust was established in 2014. The vision of the trust is that persons with disabilities like autism, Down syndrome, and so on, live and work in the community of their choice with dignity and self-respect. We started Yes Charitable Trust uh, as a vehicle primarily to provide supported employment to these individuals. We work with adults, all of them are over 18, and they all have some kind of disability, which is called a developmental disability. Just like any other disability, uh, the preponderance of males to females is higher, and uh, actually the causes of autism are not yet known. And so the genetic or why um, there are more boys who have been identified than girls uh, is also known. Uh, the other thing that people need to know is that autism in girls may look very different from the way it looks in boys. Hmm. Um, so there's a lot of research going on as to what that is. I mean, what, what is the profile, if you will, uh, of girls versus boys, but that's still in the uh, beginning stages, but it is different. There are fewer women with autism, like for instance in our uh, team members, we have about five, six now, six women to uh, 19 men. Um, so it is, you know, the preponderance is much lower, but yeah, we treat them equally. Unless it's a physical issue that we need help with lifting tables or something, in which case sometimes it's better to have men do it than the women. Try and get into their shoes and figure out what's going on. Uh, autism does have a neurobiological, it is a neurobiological disorder. Uh, we don't know what's going on in the brain, but it's fascinating the way our people, our team members think if we can get them to articulate how they think. So communication is an issue. We have to have patience when we are communicating and we have to try and um, figure out what it is that that person is trying to say. And maybe in some ways, sometimes when we say it for them, sometimes that might help in uh, extending that communication. We're doing this because there's a huge need in the adult world to provide individuals such as these uh, a quality of life that many of them don't have. They are part of the school system and at some point in time they have to exit the schools. And then there's a huge question mark in a lot of families' minds. Uh, they can go to a sheltered workshop uh, and there are several of those in the city. But those are not always what these individuals or these people themselves want to do. Um, so we try to fill that void of providing meaningful work. Uh, we play and we use the people's strengths, the individual strengths, we call them our team members, uh, to help support them in uh, working meaningfully and then feeling good about what they're doing. The inspiration for me was my daughter. She is 33 years old. She has autism. She and I were in the United States. Uh, we worked there. I worked in schools as a psychologist and a professional. Uh, for several years and then we came back here in 2013. At the time that we came back in 2013, Arti was an adult and I was a professional with many years of experience and uh, we set up this trust. We started off in 2015 with the DAPA service. It has proved to be extremely beneficial and uh, just shown us that when you provide work that is meaningful, uh, the, our team members just thrive. In 2017, we chanced upon a video about that was taken by about a cafe in Manila called the Puzzle Cafe. That cafe was run by and started by a family, a family of the young person with autism. We saw it in 2017. The, the leadership team of Yash Chat us saw it, and we said, "Why not us?" Because by that time we had many team members and a space for the different services. 
extremely small and tight. But we didn't have an avenue to provide everyone meaning to work at the same time. So we crowdfunded in 2017. Uh, people were responded to that. We collected enough funding to secure rent, you know, in a place like Bombay, it's really expensive, uh, for two years. And we decided to look for a space. We were really, really lucky, A, that we managed to find a space close by to where we currently operated, near the Dabba service or the different service. And B, that we had a lot of community support by way of providing their expertise. So we had a group of interior designers and architects who decided, they came to lunch one day with us and saw our beneficiaries, our team members, and they just decided on their own that they were going to be a part of this journey. We had another young person who is a food expert. He provided his expertise in the actual design of the menu, the design of the cafe as far as our beneficiaries and our team members being able to work there on their own. So if you notice in Cafe Alpha, it is the team members who are doing most of the work. They are just being supported by uh, our manager and other support staff. When we started with different services in 2015, as I mentioned, we, we didn't quite know what we were going to do. What we did know is that it wasn't going to be another sheltered workshop. We did know that we weren't going to keep, you know, do the same old thing that other people are doing, which is that make candles or other parties or VRs and envelopes and sell them twice a year in exhibitions. We wanted something meaningful throughout the year that our individuals would enjoy and excite, feel excited about. So the tip we chanced upon food and we chanced upon a different service. Um, and the initial stage, honestly we didn't know what we were doing but we were training on the job. Now we also had a support staff and continue to have the same people. They joined us in the in 2015 and they continue to work with us. So the challenge in the beginning was, okay, what part of this whole work cycle should we focus on? How do we train them in this? In this? And we come to find out that they were very able to go and buy because we cook fresh every day. So go to the bhajiwala, get the vegetables, communicate what that what that was and what we needed. So they'd go shopping for us, they would deliver the tiffins for us, they're part of the prep work. But we, it, it's been learning on the job and it's been learning on the job even for us who started this venture. Because we didn't know what we were getting into, but they can do almost everything that anyone else can do, they just need support to do it. What we need to understand as a community, as a society, is that every single person wants to belong. Every single person wants to feel that they are part of something larger than themselves. In a lot of cases, the initial group that we had that came our way were in many ways isolated from the community around them. And the biggest motivation for our team members was that they were part of this larger thing which was our different service in the, in the beginning. But there were also opportunities to be part of a larger community. And it is this motivation that drove them to do their best. And they continue to do their best. So it is this notion of I'm doing something worthwhile, I'm also earning my own you know, money, and uh, I feel good about what I'm doing. That is keeping the motivation levels high. They were so excited when the cafe was about to open. We had training, we were all, you know, it was just a big party for a very long time because everyone was ex excited about this. The customers were, again, as I said, they, they didn't know that our people, our team members could be, could have autism and Down syndrome or something like that, and yet be a part of this team. So for them now, our guys go to deliver the dabbas themselves and they go and they uh, will tell them, enjoy your meal or uh, we hope, you know, the dabba satisfies you, we hope. They'll, they'll talk to them like that. So the customers are very happy to receive that. In the cafe, the customers have been very, very, uh, A, they've been excited to come into a place like this and B, they were, they, most of them are very, uh, I can't say surprised, I think, uh, that we could do this with the population that we work with. Our guys really do a good job of making customers feel at home, feel welcome, and uh, the customers in turn are very open to the uh, experience.
experience. At Yash Charitable Trust, which is our parent organization, we do connect, we do uh, do therapeutic activities, so we have art, dance, music, yoga, meditation in the spare time. Now, if somebody's working in the cafe and uh, there are a large number of customers, then unfortunately they can't avail of the therapy. But if they're not and they have the time to do it, then we do uh, have them attend some of these therapeutic classes. Thank you for watching me on Glamorai.